Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very, very, very special guest today. Her name is Catherine Meyer, and she is a fin financial expert. She's amazing because she really focuses on small businesses, the entrepreneurs, the people who want to grow their business, who have really big hopes and dreams. She goes step by step with them. She works with them, and she shows them how to elevate what they have to new levels. And she's here today to tell you a little about herself, what she does, and actually give you great advice to help you. If you're an entrepreneur or you have a small business and you're really looking for ways to grow and not get so overwhelmed with the finances and make an end meet, well, she's here to show you that it's not as complex as you think it is. It's actually a lot easier than you think. And today, Catherine's here to show you how. So Catherine, tell everybody a little about yourself. I'm so glad you're on the show and you know, tell everybody a little about what you do. Oh, thank you for that warm introduction, Stacy. Very excited to spend this time with your powerhouse audience. So thanks for giving me the mic for a moment. My name is Catherine, and a, a short thing that I'll tell you is entrepreneurs work way too hard to get stuck. And when you are stuck, you got to get unboxed. So I'm the founder of Unboxed Advisors, where that's what we do. We help entrepreneurs get to the next level with confidence, clarity, security, and a professional team working on your behalf. So I'm excited to walk down this path with you um, as an advisor who is doing things a little bit untraditional for um for individuals. And I just want to spread the word that there's a better way to operate for a lot of small business owners. So thank you for having me today. Oh, you're very welcome. You know, I find a lot of times like you, you like ever, you know, we were talking before the show since COVID came, you know, the world has changed tremendously. Everything around us has changed with well, the way businesses are run, the way things are done, you know, and, and so many times I see so many entrepreneurs and I see mm -hmm. so many business owners put endless hours into their business and they just find themselves either plateaued, struggling to make ends meet. They're not going where they should be going, or they have a lot of clients, but at the end of the month, they, they look at their expenses and they look at their business and they're not where they should be. And it gets very frustrating, you know? So yeah, you know, what are some of the things that you've noticed and, you know, that you could think you can think of that could help people who are either small entrepreneurs or business owners who really want to elevate their business? You know, do you see some common questions and some, some common issues that pop up a lot? Oh my goodness. Well, I've seen just about everything, but some of the common pitfalls that small business owners have right off the jump is not accounting. Not, they don't have accounting records and books set up. Um, so I will walk with another entrepreneur and they'll say, oh yeah, you know, I only get a couple deposits a year for my small business. I don't really need to track anything. It's like, oh no. That's that having great accounting books is how you can make financial forecasts, which will help you understand your tax liability. And yeah. that right there will help you with your cash flow management, having the peace of mind of what is happening in your financial landscape. So, number one pitfall that I see is, you know, ignoring the importance of accounting. And I'm just going to say it, Stacey, like, no one besides CPAs thinks accounting is sexy, okay? I can't tell you how many people I know that know that they should have accounting records and it's on that little post-it note that's underneath their keyboard at their desk. It happens yeah. all the time. People naturally, you know, peel off the things that they just they just don't want to do. So that's right. the first thing is, you know, you got to treat accounting like the love language of business, not yeah. that thing that your aunt, your, you know, kind of does for you once a year. Like that is a game changer for entrepreneurs. Absolute game changer. Um, another pitfall that I see for small business owners is not recognizing that you are in control of your own tax destiny. The financial moves that you're making throughout a calendar year mm -hmm. are the, that becomes the data input into yeah. your tax return. It's not just to like hope and pray. And then the IRS tells you how much you owe at the end. Like that, if you think that's how that works, 
it is time for an upgrade, y'all. So <laughs> that is the other part is you can be in charge of your own taxes by how you operate and function. And then the third thing, Stacey, that I see is not having an operational game plan. Again, not sexy to talk about. You know, that's not very fun to put a plan on a page and have the accountability to actually do those things. But, you know, right. like no one got skinny on accident. No one got healthy on accident. It took right. a lot of time effort, support, and those micro habits that get yeah. you healthy. So that's the same thing in your business. Oh, I, I totally agree with you. You know, it, the people have to realize how important it is. I can't tell you how many people I know that, you know, really push the, you know, they, they push the finances all the way to the end because they just don't want to deal with it because it isn't, it's not a sexy thing. Most people are not number oriented. You know, some people are, but even if you are number oriented as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, how many hats can you wear? You know, it's almost impossible. And you know what you, a finance expert or a CPA, you know, is going to know the ins and outs of how to do things properly, how to organize things, how to get the numbers correct and actually show you what you're doing and what you're lacking. They're going to be able to actually help you see things from a different light. You know, it's, it's almost, it's virtually impossible to do all that stuff on your own because it is a, a large job to do and it takes, it's very time consuming. So to think as a business owner or, or a uh, entrepreneur, if you could, that you could do it all by yourself, it's, you're totally in la la land because you can't, you, can, you totally can't. And, you know, it, running a business takes long enough in, in itself, you know, trying to figure out the finances is a totally different thing. Yeah, what's your thoughts on that? Not just even figuring out the finances, but using your financials to make proactive strategic decisions about your business. Y'all, when you get into a car, Stacy, there's a reason why the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror, right? So when you're right. looking at those financials, you're looking in the rear view mirror of the things that have already happened. You need yes. to be using that information on a regular basis in real time, right? Just like you're driving, you're always checking your mirrors, but yes. we need to really use that historical information to project what's happening in the future. Cause that's what we really care about as business owners. You know, once yes. the toothpaste is out of the tube, all we can do is do better and make better decisions. Now you did mention something about CPAs. Oh my gosh, we need the nerds of the finance world to break down the financials. But one of the common pitfalls again, that I see is Partnering with a CPA who has way too many clients yeah. that they can get you and, and, and look at your financials, but only talking to a CPA once a year is not going to cut the mustard. So yeah. if you know that your financial acumen, that you are not the CFO that you want to be, it's yeah. important that you right size yourself with a CPA um, that can help you have an ongoing deep relationship to build that CFO muscle for you and to get the processes and procedures in place. So you have that acumen and you're very comfortable with what you're doing and a trusted person that is so familiar with you, your vision, your strategy, and your accounting records to be able to truly impact you in a more meaningful way. I, I think that's exactly so true. You need, really need someone that can really focus on you because when some, we, you have these people who have lots of clients, great. They have a great reputation. They do really well. But how much time can they devote to your specific business and how much, you know, one on one can they give you, you know, so, you know, you have to look at those things, you know, in college, I always like going to a smaller college because I got to know the professors one on one and it was a different type of relationship and they cared, you know, like if you go to a large university and you have 300 people in the auditorium, your professor is not going to know who you are. You know, you're just going to be one of the people, you know, just listening to that lecture. And the same thing goes when it comes to business and it comes to, you know, uh, doing what you need to in order to grow. And I think also too, is that you know, a lot of times I see, I and mean, you can give me your impact on it, but, you know, people spend money where they shouldn't be spending money because they are not really keeping track of their financials and seeing what works and doesn't work. What am I selling? What am I not selling? What am 
am I investing in and what's the return of that investment? Am I actually making money by investing in this? You know, what, what am I getting back? And I think a lot of times people are wasting their money and they're not even realizing, you know, because sometimes like you don't realize until you start adding it up. It might not seem like a lot, but by the end of the month or the end of the year, when you tally it, how much you spend in a specific area, you're like, oh my God, I spent X amount of money and I only got this back in return, you know, and that could be a very big flaw in a business and can hurt a business tremendously, I think. What's your intake on that? <clears throat> oh, I, I couldn't agree more with you that it is a surprise for a lot of entrepreneurs that return on investment. And it's really hard to track. That's why working with a CPA to get those records, processes, and procedures. So, you know, if you're selling four products or five services, you are able to pull reports immediately to know what volume you sold, what was the margins that went into it, if you're making in money, if you're not making money. Now, one of the trends that we are seeing in professional service organizations um, that's kind of bleeding over is the idea of having stable, consistent income that can come through subscription models, maintenance models, monthly fees, where instead of charging a client that's say $20,000 up front for one year of service, you're breaking that up into a monthly fee. For a lot of business owners that has helped them maintain their cash flow to be positive, have consistent insight to what is coming down the pike and helping them control capacity as well with that capacity planning. So you're not just getting hit all all at once um, with that cash and having to manage it. So that is a trend that we're seeing moving forward is finding ways to get that consistent monthly um, cash in for us as consumers, right? Yeah. Um, we're used to the monthly fees. We got the Netflix, we got the Hulu, we got the Disney plus, we got, you know, the gym memberships. As a consumer, we are more and more used to that. So a lot of entrepreneurs, um, even in, you know, manufacturing or service industries, they're doing this kind of pricing and billing to really support those small business owners. Now, when it comes to uh, working with a business and working with an entrepreneur, what's the, you know, where do they start? Because they come to you and, you know, they're a little flustered, you know, they have a lot of the questions to ask that, and some of them don't even know what questions to ask. They just, you know, they just need help. You know, and so what are what are some things that could help, you know, entrepreneurs and businesses get on the right track so they could start really excelling in their business and start growing to the level they want to be at? Yeah, I think being first and being really clear on what you want. And this happens. It's happened to me with almost every business owner that I find and that I that I talk to. Um, the question is very simple. Tell me what you want out of your business. And almost every time, Stacey. There is now a laundry list that spews from the mouth of this busy business owner of all mm. of the things that they wish someone else would do for them, yeah. not what they really want, not what they are dreaming of, not what they see, but all the things that they are eyeball deep into things that they only want to be waist deep in. Um, yeah. So that's the first thing is so to peel that back, uh, like the banana peel, peeling that back a little bit to really get clarity of tell me what it is that you want. Do you want a lifestyle business that allows you to have a good life, but when you're done, you're going to hang up your hat and it'll dissolve? Do you want a legacy business? Do you have people within your organization that are gonna continue on this business that's important to you? Are you philanthropic? Are you doing this all so you can leave the world in a better place than where you found it? Are you a die with zero kind of mentality where you're like, listen, we're going to ride the high life. We're having beers on the boat where, you know, we are having a great life and I'm going to leave $300 in the bank account. It's really yeah. interesting to get deep and to have those discussions of tell me what it is that you really want. And then using those the as a framework, Stacy, to build yeah. out what that dream operating system would be for that small business owner, that entrepreneur. And my favorite, I'll just tell you, it's spoiler alert. My favorite is the entrepreneurial operating system. And what I have found is when business owners are using that, it not only goes into their business, but they start also 
putting it into their personal life. And when mm. they start putting it into their personal life, it's like, oh, those two tracks are working together. What's happening in my personal life, what's happening in my business. And then all of a sudden it's happening in their financials as well. Um, and it really takes the stress down for a lot of business owners. So have you ever heard of the entrepreneurial operating system before Stacy? No, but I'd like to learn. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, if I can, I'll give you the 10 cent tour of the entrepreneurial operating system. So it is, uh, Gino Wickman is responsible for this. Um, it started in Michigan and what the entrepreneurial operating system, it, it's a framework. All right. It's just like in the world of fitness, it's a diet and training program. That's what it is in the world of business. Right. right. And there's six different components. So there's six different things that, that Gino really wants you to identify. And he's like, listen, it's in every single business. All right. I can walk into any business. I'm going to find these six things. So one mm -hmm. is vision. So going back to what I talked about, it's like, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Like the spice girls. All right. Yeah. You gotta get clear about that. I think I just dated myself, Stacey. I'm pretty sure. I just <laughs> <laughs> the next thing is people, that human capital. Even if you are a solopreneur, I bet you there's other people that you've got on your team, whether that yeah. is a spouse, a financial advice, you, you've got people, um, no matter where you are. And, you know, maybe it's a large organization and you've got 500 people, but you've got this human capital component that also has to be nurtured and taken care of. You right. got data. Okay. In the world of data, you got all the metrics, you got all the numbers, you got all the things going on, um, from all these different systems flying at you, um, all over the place. Right. And then you got issues. You always have issues. Like if you're, if you're growing, you're dying, you always have these issues that are yeah. coming up and happening. Then you've got like the process, Stacy, you might know exactly what to do in your business, but if you're gone one day, can someone sit in your seat and operate for you? Or are you going to be dead in the water? So yeah. having processes and procedures and where that will dovetail is for those who are wanting to sell their businesses. Hey, y'all, best way to increase one of your business valuations is to have standard operating procedures that are followed by everyone. So you can say, if you buy my business, you get all of my hard work and all of my things. And then the last thing is what they talk about is traction. And you can see the book on my little bookshelf. It's called Traction. And this is the actual, like, we got goals, baby. We got rocks. We have expectations. We got things that we're shooting for. This is your strategic planning. This is like the where we're going thing. So that's the yeah. whole, like, very basic of the entrepreneurial operating system that you're treating all six of those things almost like its own little micro business. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Yeah. Definitely makes sense. So, so when you, when you start, so step one is the first thing you're going to do when you have this vision. We're going to talk about what you really want to get out of your business, what that will mean to you to get that out of your business. How will that impact your family? How will that impact you personally, professionally, and also fulfill those deep goals that are down in your gut, Stacey, of yeah. I do want to have impact on my community. I do want to have impact maybe in certain different areas, but getting really, um, really deep with, with what you truly want out of your your gut and your heart. Um, and we're not talking about like the one year plan. We're talking about the, you get one shot life y'all you get one. So tell yeah. me what you really want. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. And you know, from there, it's, it's really an exploratory um, conversation, but what we find is money makes the world go round. When yeah. you've got money, you got problems. When you don't have money, you still got problems. Like it doesn't make problems, it may, it, money definitely makes uh, problems easier to solve, but it doesn't right. take away all of your issues. Um, yes. What I find with the clients that I am privileged to work with is a term, let me know if you've ever heard this, the CFO spouse. I have not heard that. No. So typically what we find is in relationships, you don't have to be married, but in relationships, there's typically a CFO spouse. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting to identify those individuals because it's not always the business owner 
of the family. It's a right. very interesting dynamic. So, you know, you can't just talk to the business owner. It's a really holistic approach to, to the whole thing. Yeah. I like that. I like that. So you, yeah. you go from, from that and, and then what is the next step after that? Yeah. So now the next step is to go through financials, the history of the financials, to get access, to see all of the things. So like when you go to a doctor, Stacy, you don't just hop on the table and say, you know, my shoulder hurts and they give you a prescription. They're like, listen, you got to undress. I'm going to do blood work. I'm going to give you a physical. I'm going to do all of this stuff. Same thing should be happening when you're working with someone who's going to be helping and assessing your financials. If they are just giving you the prescription without a diagnosis, like that's malpractice, y'all. Um, for what we want to be doing is going through the last three years of your tax return. Less two, three years of your accounting records. If you don't have accounting records, how can we support you in those endeavors? Um, yeah. And really going through that financials and going through that exercise of identifying who our CFO is. Is yeah. that a spouse that's helping along? Is that the business owner themselves? Like, what is that dynamic? The acumen for the financials the appetite for the financials and how often we're using those to make strategic business decisions because there are some business owners who like they know their numbers every day of the week and twice on Sunday. And there's other business owners that are like, I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. I have money in the bank today. I checked the bank account. I look okay. So it's a yeah. whole different thing. Oh, definitely, definitely. So like once you know your history and then once you start understanding what's going on, so now where do we go? What's the next step after the, after understanding your history? Yeah. So then we start going into, it can go all different ways, Stacey. I'll just put it on the table that mm -hmm. not every single person needs the same level of care, nor right. do they need the same prescription every single time. So it can go a variety of ways. One way it might look is you need to get tax planning under control. So tax yes. planning and tax preparation are two very different things. If yep. you are handing the shoebox to your CPA in March saying, this is everything I did last year, you are just doing tax planning. That's it. Or just tax preparation. That's it. They're taking right. your stuff. They're putting it in. You're done. Now, if you've never gone through the education of tax planning, I'm going to teach you what that should look like. So when you're going to a CPA for yeah. tax planning, you're like, that's what that is. So here's what tax planning should be. Okay. Tax planning should be a choose your own adventure. Okay. <laughs> so it should give you up to maybe three to five different iterations. And what you're looking at is all of the different tax levers that you could be pulling in order to lower or to save tax dollars. That's what we're really doing here. And not every single lever is appropriate for every single person. If you've got kids, if you own your home, what state you're in, like there's all these things. So it's your CPA's job to get to know you intimately to be able to identify those tax levers and to be able to show you, okay, Stacy, if you're my client, you're going to come in. If you did nothing, this is what's going to be on your tax bill. Okay. Now, if you did option one, this is what it's going to look like. But if you did option one and option four, this is what it's going to look like and right. helps you go through that process of being the captain of choosing your own adventure. So that's, that's one of the things that you can do. The other thing is hopping into the business and working right alongside the business owner. That right. is where I like to live and play um, in, in the world of uh, the entrepreneur operating system or EOS. There's a unique position called the integrator, which is typically your COO. They're the person spinning all the plates. I like to yeah. do that for business owners who have never had that type of service before. Right. Um, and, and oh my gosh, the first couple of times the uh, business owner is like, I can't have someone else come into my business. I can't have someone else run team meetings. I could never have someone else call a banker. I could never have. And then all of a sudden they'll start doing it once or twice. And they're like, how did I go this long without letting go of the vine? Like, how did I go that 
long. So I'm sure yeah. you have talked to some business owners and advisors who also experience that, that like once you can delegate and elevate yourself, you're like, why didn't I do this years ago? Oh my gosh. Yes, exactly. I can't tell you how many people I know and they, they just, you know, oh no, no, no. I, I have to be there. I have to do everything. It's not going to get done the right way. If I'm not there, you know, it, nothing gets done the way it's supposed to. I'm not going to do as well. And they just don't know how to let go of the vine. And I, it's just, you know, that person is always under stress. That person is always under the gun. And I think when you're like that, your, your office or your company or, you know, the people around you in your business feel that energy too, and it affects everybody. So I think that's such an important topic that people have to understand is that you really need to know how to delegate and let go of the vine. And for the people who don't think it's possible, it is so possible, but you just have to, you know, you have to have confidence that you could let go and, and have confidence in the people who are running the business with you or helping you. Yeah. And it's, you know, like accounting is not a desirable word in most people's, uh, you know, vernacular. The other yeah. one that people are like, oh, don't say it. Don't say it. Accountability. One of yeah. the things that I have noticed working with business owners is there's typically the business owner, the visionary, they are like flying by the seat of their pants. It's a hundred miles per hour. They've got more ideas playing around in their brain than most people do before the end of breakfast, okay? They are fantastic at generating all of these great ideas. And they get so excited about these ideas that they'll start talking to people and they're only going to give them like half the story because they've already told 12 other people. They can't remember what they did. Holy yeah. smokes. But my point is with this visionary, typically another blueprint DNA that I see with these highly successful business owners is they love processes and procedures and accountability for everyone else around them except for themselves. They're wild. Okay. They are wild. So they also struggle with the, well, I can't ask someone to do something that I myself am not able to do. So that's yeah. where integrating someone to be a hired number two in your business can help you with that buffer and be that filter for that business owner. So one, those ideas that are oozing out of them that are awesome. And some of them are terrifying. You've got yeah. a filter of someone who can see everything in the business to say, that's a great idea. That's mobilized. Let's go. And yes. Ooh, that idea right there. I'm going to put that in the parking lot. We, we might, we're going to put that in the parking lot over here. And you, and you, and you get that. And you also get that lever uh, or that, that benefit for a business owner. They're like, people always are constantly coming to me. They're always coming to me. I'm the only one with the answers. Everyone yeah. constantly comes to me. Hello, let me get, grab the mirror. You are the problem because everyone's coming to you. If you yeah. yourself would like to have that um, capacity to do more, then it, that is a real clear indicator that you need another layer and you need to empower the people below you in order to get that job done. So, you know, I would say to Stacey, if you've got a business owner that comes to you and they're like, I have to be the one who does it. No one else can do it better than me. The next question is, and does everyone come to you for help? because you have not empowered them. And they're going to go, that's a hard question. And you're like, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked. Yeah. That's so true. That's so true because like so many people, they have not delegated and taught the, the lower, lower level right below them, their management staff that's below them, how to properly do it. And so they're left in the wind. They know bits and pieces of what they're supposed to do, but they don't know exactly all the steps. And that's a big problem. And I see that all the time, you know, and what are some suggestions you may have for that? Well, I also think that a lack of training and delegation is fueling turnover. If I am an employee and my boss refuses to teach me or to let me grow either in responsibilities up or wide in teaching me new things, then I'm sitting here dying and I yeah. got to go. And yeah. for the younger generations that we know had grew up with iPhones in their hands, it's got to be immediate and it has to be frequent. So mm -hmm. if you are not delegating, if you are not elevating, if you're not taking the time 
to invest in people, not only for yourself with capacity, but also as a way to retain these good people. Like that's a huge opportunity that you're missing out on because in general, people want to feel heard. They want to feel understood and they want to know that when they go to work every day, they are serving something greater than themselves. And if you've got a boss who's constantly saying, I'll take it, I'll do it. Oh, you don't know what you're doing. I'll take it. You're not going to have those good people for very long and you're going to miss out on nurturing a team that can take you to the next level. Right. Exactly. I agree so much with you. I think, you know, I find that a lot when I talk to people, they do that all the time. And that's like a a huge, huge thing that I I see in so many businesses and they say plateaued and they don't grow, you know, and they have the potential to grow, but they don't grow. And the person who's in charge doesn't understand why it's not growing. And, you know, and sometimes it's hard to speak to those people because we were talking about it last time. I think before the show, we had mentioned that sometimes people do things like back in the 80s, like they're not they're not moving with the times and I think changes have to be made. It's not like it used to be. No, not at all. And um, especially in the world of this Zoom rooms, communication has to change. When you're in a room with someone physically, Stacey, you've got a captive audience, okay? They can't like pick up their cell phone and try to start checking emails. Like that's a faux pas. But we see that all the time in remote work. So even the cadence of your meetings needs to change. The yes. type, an agenda of meeting that you have, you cannot get on your soapbox and talk for 25 minutes to a Zoom room. You need to have interactions every you know, 90 seconds to two minutes in order to keep people in engaged. And yes. that is, that's big, um, especially for the younger generation that are coming up through the ranks. We know right. that, you know, home is where the Wi-Fi is. So yeah. we can't be managing the same way that worked inside of a traditional office, nor to different generations and different breeds of workers. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think, I think that's a big issue that a lot of people, especially older, you know, older owners, you know, really have to move with the times. They got to start really interacting. They got to start understanding with an open mind and really try to get on that person's level because everybody does things differently, but as long as they get the job done, right. That's all that matters at the end of the day, as long as it gets done, right. And progress is made. That's all that matters. And people want to feel that way, Stacey. People will flourish when you say, hey, Catherine, you're on my team. I need you to fulfill this finance role, okay? And I'm going to just count on you to have my financials every 10th of the month. I'm going to count on you to give me a forecast at the end of every month of where we're going for the next, you know, six months. And I'm going to count on you to make sure that, you know, my account payable, my accounts receivable are nurtured, managed, and protected. And if you hold me accountable to that, that has just freed you up from all of that stuff. And it has given me a purpose of going, wow, I'm trusted. Wow. They need me. Wow. I'm learning things here that I've never learned before and what opportunities that I'm getting. It all, it all clicks in in together. So um, I I know that I want to talk about strategy and helping business owners, but really at the end of the day, it all comes down to people. It it really does. It really does. That's so true. That's so true. Now, what are some, what, what are some ideas that you could give people that you can really, you know, you know, help people, you know, get started in the right, in the right steps. And we talked about this earlier in the conversation and we've gone through all the steps. We've gone through the vision. We've went through the issues of money, the, you know, having that um, CSO and, and the history and the levels that, you know, of care, the tax planning, hopping in there, working side by side, you know, and really understanding that they have to play a role in this. It's so important that they play a role. It's not just, you know, giving everything to everybody and, you know, and then expecting X, Y, and Z, and then go jumping in and trying to do it yourself when you, when you're already delegated to somebody else, you know, so once that's all established, you know, what are some important factors that these people have to understand in order to be successful and to move, you know, and to really, you know, elevate, you know, because no one wants to, you know, 
they want to start the snowball effect. They want to start moving. Say like, you know, they want to start being able to invest. Like we were talking about before, people want to be able to get their, their dreams, you know, whether it's a buying a boat or buying a, you know, or just renting out, you know, a, a place or buying something and, and, you know, start investing in things that they weren't able to before, you know, how, you know, what are some good advice that you can give them that help them along the way so they could start, you know, making those dreams a reality and, and, and be able to let go of that fine a little and, and be able to really start thriving instead of just surviving. Oh my, my gosh. And if it was that easy, right. But like we wouldn't be here. Like I wouldn't have a job if it was, how it, it's hard. Being yeah. a business owner is hard and it's not getting any easier y'all. It really isn't. So a couple of things that I would suggest to any business owner, take it for a test drive y'all. So there's one it's, you've probably heard of an organizational chart. You know, who's been here the longest? Who yeah. who manages these people? Instead, I like to use an accountability chart. Again, one of those words. That are, I don't know about this, Catherine. An accountability chart is where you can identify, going back to the 80s a little bit, all the seats on the bus. So mm -hmm. looking at your business first and foremost of what do all of the things in the business need? Okay. Where do I need someone to really own all of that component of the business? Yeah. Then you put people into that spot. You don't say these are my people and I got to find a space for them. You say, what does my business truly need? How do I want to operate it? Of these seats that I'm creating, what are the top, you know, three to five things that that seat they're accountable for. I'm not worrying about it anymore as a business owner because they are accountable for it. Now, you as a business owner might be in that seat. You, yeah. you might be that one who's there, but getting very clear about that and building your business with intention rather than hiring and trying to find a person, really, really build that framework first. The other thing that I would encourage business owners to do, and it's a little uncomfortable, but we know that comfort and growth do not exist in the same household, Stacey. We know that. The mm -hmm. other thing that I would ask for people to do is to keep an issues list. You, I'm guilty of it. You're probably guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. Of We see something that maybe wasn't quite right, or we have an idea and it lives in our notebooks, it lives in our brains. And yes. to have one place where your team can see all of those issues is very, very empowering. It becomes a place of open communication and also accountability where someone else on your team, Stacy, might see an issue that you are having and they'll be able to solve it before we even have to have a discussion. So for example, Stacy, you need your financials by the 15th every month. It's now the 16th. So you put it on the team issues list, like financials, question mark. And your bookkeeper goes, got it. I missed that deadline. Let me fix that right away. So um, it makes it no place to hide in an organization. It makes clear communication. And by empowering everyone to add things on the issues list, yeah. it becomes a that's not problems that live silently. These are problems that we're going to address as a team mm -hmm. in real time with open communication and, and how you can really facilitate that is having great meetings. Okay. Nobody likes a meeting that could have been an email. No one ain't, nobody got time for that. But what we right. do have time for is really effective meetings to talk about those issues, talk about the data, make traction in your business and go up in a way. So having really intentional, strategic, meaningful meetings that are designed to solve issues, solve problems, create traction in your business is also the game changer. So those are the three things that any business owner, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling unsure, if your financials are a hot mess, if you feel mm -hmm. misunderstood, get really into that zone of having an accountability chart framework based on what your business needs, creating an issues list that can be shared with everyone. And then also being intentional with how you communicate and the meetings that you have with your team, not only internally, but also with that advisory staff that you have helping you personally, that financial advisor, the insurance broker, the corporate attorney, the estate planning attorney, the um, HR person who's doing your handbook, all the things that need to be wrapped up into that.
Yes. Oh, I agree 100% with you. Now, if you had to take everything in our conversation today and you really wanted to like break it down and, and really give um, emphasize on some important factors, what would be some of the important factors you'd like to emphasize for the listeners today? One, you're not alone. You're mm-hmm. totally not alone. If you're a business owner listening to this and you're like, I don't have a QuickBooks, I haven't looked at my financial accounts. It's in six months. I've never had my CPA ask me about my personal life. You're not alone. That's really untraditional things that we're talking about because that is what the modern business owner needs. So just think about if those are not the conversations that you're having, but yet you're feeling stuck, let that give you some insight on changes that you should be making or better relationships that you should be seeking for you. Because uh, my father told me once and still great advice, nobody cares more about you than you. So if your advisors that you're surrounding yourself with are not asking these questions, are not giving you the care and attention that you deserve, know that you're not alone and the modern business owner needs something more. So go, go find a better advisor for yourself. I love that. I love that. Now tell us a little about the services that you provide. Sure. So my company is called Unboxed Advisors. We um, are the un-CPAs, the unicorns of of this uh, space. My business partner, Susan Bryant, and I have both exited from these larger firms and have created Unboxed Advisors where we work with high net worth entrepreneurs, usually teetering about a million dollars of annual net income to themselves. And we work with them in three different capacities. One is tax planning and execution, because there's one thing to tell a business owner, these are all the things that you need to be doing with your money. But we know the barrier to that is actually getting it done. So we'll also just go and execute on that for you with that concierge white glove attention. You can't do that with a thousand clients. Um, That's why we've developed Unbox to really service a small set. The other service that we provide is your accounting, your tax preparation, your tax planning for those business owners that are really churning and burning into those businesses and, and need that financial seat, if you will fulfilled. And then we go all the way up to a full scope C-suite where you get a uh, COO, a CFO, and a CQO, a chief question officer to help you unpack everything that you need to be unpacking to get you where you need to go, whether that is an M&A transaction, whether that is getting an ESOP ready to rock and roll so your employees can continue your legacy, whatever it is that you want to get done from your business, we can function in those, those three roles. I love it. Now, do you have anything that you offer the listeners? Like, do you have a newsletter or a food consultation or anything like that? Absolutely. You can go out to our um, website, www.unboxedadvisors.com. You can schedule the discovery call. We can see if we can help you, but there's also oodles of resources. Um, I'll give your listeners two of them, like go download these and use them with your own CPA. One is the, our chart of accounts is out there. If you are a new small business owner, you're like, I don't know anything about accounting. We have that out there. Go out there and that can go right into your QuickBooks. The other thing that we have is the home office deduction. Hello, COVID and the pandemic. If you are using your home for any sort of home office, make sure that you're getting that deduction and that is a freebie off of our website at unboxedadvisors.com. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. You know, is there anything before we go that you'd like to input or add to the conversation? Oh my gosh. No, Stacey, this has been wonderful. Thank you for giving me the time and also to your awesome community. They are just so welcoming and so kind and so engaged. So uh, thank you all for listening to this discussion. It's It's been fabulous uh, spending time with you today. 
Well, today has been great. You gave a whirlwind of information. You know, this is a topic that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but it's so important and so necessary if you want to have a thriving business. And you, you gave a lot of great information today. And I just want to thank you for all the knowledge that you shared with us and for coming on the show and, you know, and really educating the listeners on different options and different ways that they can improve their, their either their small businesses or their growing businesses and how, you know, the steps they need to really take and some of the tools, strategies that they can implement into their own personal and business lives that could really make a huge impact. So I just want to say thank you so much, Catherine, for coming on the show today. You've been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Stacey. Oh, you're so welcome. You have a great day. Thanks you as well.